like it to welcome you to my secret lair of instruction, otherwise known as the movie room. In here, we're going to learn a little bit about bacterial shapes, bacterial colony morphology, and so forth that go along with our lesson plan on bacteria. So, without any further to do, let's go to the learning lab. This is what, before the contagion lockdown, was known as the movie room. It's now going to be where I'm going to be able to teach you a little bit about the morphology of bacteria and bacteria shapes and so forth. Just wanted to give you a little scan of what we have in here. It's really kind of cool and a lot of fun, even down to the movie seats. As you can see, if you'd like to watch what's going on here. Now here's the meat of what's going on today. We're going to learn all about the bacteria shapes. What I want you to do as good biotechnology students is teach your parents about the different shapes by cooking them pancakes. So I'm going to in a minute go into the kitchen and show you how to cook pancakes into the different bacteria shapes. We're going to keep it simple. We're just going to use four main shapes. Now if you can see this, this is what we're looking at. A round shape here is called a caucus. Or if you've got two of them, they're called cocci, and you can remember that by thinking of these as being cocci. Here, if you have a long pill shape, it's bacillus, and it'll look like this. And a popular bacillus that we tend to think of is an E. coli. A lot of times, bacillus, like an E. coli, is going to have not one, but many flagella spinning off of it, and that's what makes it highly motile. The third shape is spiral, or spirelli. We'll call it spiral for short here. And I like to represent the spiral as an S, but what you want to think of is a spiral is actually a corkscrew shape. And uh, often they are also motile. They tend not to have clusters because they just hang out as one, and they go spinning and causing trouble by corkscrewing into tissue. Usually these are very hard to get rid of. An example of this would be syphilis or Lyme disease. These are caused by spirelli type bacteria. And then the fourth one is called Vibrio. And Vibrio is usually represented by a kind of a comma shape. So they're more thick on the top, thin on the bottom. Now, as a kind of plus, you want to notice that when a bacteria gets into trouble, it makes something called an endospore. And when we get fancy with our pancakes, we're going to make an endospore pancake. And it looks like a pancake with a pancake in the middle of it. We're going to call that an endospore. And the idea of an endospore is that when a bacteria gets into trouble and it thinks it's going to die, instead of going through its normal binary fission and making an exact copy of itself, it'll, make a, it'll start to make a copy of itself, but then it's going to grab its twin brother and tuck its head inside its body, squeeze all the juices out of it, leaving only the things that are most necessary for it to be born again later, and wrap it up with an extremely thick coat of peptidoglycan to kind of protect it from the outside environment. Then this one dies and this small two micron or smaller bacteria is left and this just kind of waits like Dracula in a coffin for the right you know, environmental conditions to present themselves and then when things are right it sprouts out and it causes a lot of trouble. Uh, one that was in the news back in 9-11 was anthrax. Anthrax has an ability to make endospores, and then those endospores, they can actually be weaponized. They can make so that they don't have static cling, and they can be put into envelopes and mailed to different people that you want to kill, and all they have to do is open it up. And an unusual thing about anthrax is that if you breathe it in, and your lungs become infected with it, it's got a 90% kill rate. Now, if it gets on your skin, eh, maybe 30% kill rate, but if the doctors catch it in time, they can just cut your skin off and throw it on the floor, and you're good to go. You don't want to breathe it in, though, because those endospores, they can float in the air, and then they can distribute themselves that way. So, these are the four shapes that you're going to be thinking about. Number one is caucus, a round shape. Two is bacillus, a pill shape. 
spiral corkscrew or an S shape on a simple 2D representation, Vibrio that looks like a comma, and then endospore, which is a small spore, endo, inside another bacteria, and soon it will be a spore all by itself. There you go. Let's go cook some pancakes. All right, now we're going to go ahead and make the pancakes. Now I'm using a plain old baking mix from Pioneer. Calls for two cups of the powder. And this powder's got almost nothing in it. So you're going to have to put in, let's see, a cup and a half of milk. And since milk might be hard to come by in these contagion lockdowns, this is using carnation evaporated milk. And the can says that you can reconstitute it with water or not. And I just asked my wife about it, and she says not makes it taste a whole lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and pour 12 ounces, which is a cup and a half, to the two cups of powder. But before I do that, I'm going to stop. Because one of the things that you want to do is when you mix it up, you want it to have a good consistency. So before I put the full cup and a half in there, I'm going to take a look at how thick it is. Now also to give it its body and to make it stick together and give it extra protein, I'm going to put two eggs in there. So let's go ahead and put the eggs and see how much it thickens up. This is going to be some good pancakes. This is a, hopefully a good learning experience for not only you, but everybody in the family. And it's going to be some good food. Now, you can see how it's coming along. That's thick, and that is a lot too thick. So we're going to head put the rest of the cream in there. And it looks like I may actually have to add a little bit more. It's thickening up so much. Because you want to be able to pour it. But you want it to be thick enough where you can manipulate it. Basically play with your food and make different shapes out of it. And that's starting to look fantastic right about like that. Oh yeah, that's nice. Alright, so about this thick. Yeah, see that? That'll do. So I'm going to keep stirring it up a little bit to knock out all the little crumbly chunks to make sure that it gets creamy smooth. It just makes it cook a little bit better. My parents are going to be so impressed when you go ahead and cook them breakfast and then tell them all the different shapes of bacteria. Huh? It's a meal and a learning experience. say that that's good enough and we're ready to start cooking. So what I did is I've got this flat pan that I always use in school. I'm going to use it again today. And one of the things I can tell you about cooking pancakes is that the way to make them taste really good is lots of butter. So I'm going to get started with some butter on here. And we'll let this pan heat up a little bit and then I'll start showing you the different shapes as you pour them. Now what I've done is I went ahead and got a certain scoop that will make it a little bit easier to pour the pancakes in. So I'm going to use this to pour them and this to pick them up and sling them around. Alright, there we go. We got that all covered up. Burning off any residual COVID viruses. I think that's uh, looking about right. And let's start laying in the bacteria. Now, but now you remember what the round shaped ones are, right? What do we call the round ones? Right, the round ones are caucus, or if you have two of them or more, they're cocci. The pill shaped ones are bacillus. So this would be our bacillus here. 
spiral is going to look like an S. There's our spiral. And Vibrio is the comma shape that looks like this. So it's going to be thick at the top, then go thin down at the bottom like that. There you go. That's your basic shape. So let's let that cook for a little bit. And that's how easy it is. And that's what you're going to do. You can usually start to see them brown a little bit on the edges. I think I'm seeing it. So let me try to flip on this guy and see what we got. Oh yeah. That's it. That's looking right. And yeah, nice bacillus flipped over. Yeah. Vibrio. And you gotta be careful with this guy, the spiral it wants to fall apart. Ooh, made it. There you go, and you're almost done with your first batch. Now if you cook up like I did two cups of powder, you're gonna end up with a lot of pancakes. So that'll be enough for everybody. Put these off on the side. Make sure they're cooking on the other side. Yeah, it looks good. And we're going to start on the other ones. Now, pay attention because now I'm going to add a little bit of a curve to this. Remember me telling you about the endospore. An endospore is the bacteria's attempt to protect itself and live on past a dangerous environmental time. So, we have to cook a pancake inside a pancake. I changed over to using my phone as the camera. So, now what I've done is I've poured a little pancake here in the middle and letting this cook. And this is going to represent our endospore. So, once this is cooked where I can feel it's going to start browning on the edges, then I'll go ahead and pour the rest of the pancake around it. So here we get a good bunch of this. I'm going to try to wipe off the bottom a little bit. Now I can pour this pancake around it. And the same with this one. And so you'll see when we flip it over, what we're trying to get is it looking like a pancake within a pancake. So let's let this cook for a little bit and we'll come back to it. All right, let's see how these turned out. We flip them over. Aha, see that? That is your endospore, your bacteria inside a bacteria. Now, if this were actually Bacillus anthracis or anthrax, you would see the endospore, but the bacteria would look quite differently. Anthrax is a bacillus, but it's a very long, curve-shaped bacillus, so it's going to actually look something like this. Go ahead and look those up in Google Images, and you'll see that some, something like this. That's your anthrax bacillus. All right, now that we've got those cooking out the way, if you are like me and you made that much pancake mix, then you've got enough pancake mix to cook a whole lot more of these bacteria. So I'll just go ahead and butter this up and get another roll going. And you'll do the same thing. So as you start cooking them up, just kind of think, well, what do you want them to know? You can do caucus. Bacillus anthracis up there. And there you go. Good luck with feeding your family. This will help everybody learn a little something about the shapes of bacteria. Bye-bye now.